Hello everybody, and this will be a little bit unusual video on my channel. Uh, in this video, I will be explaining every attachment in unit classified pre-beta. If you don't know what unit classified is, it is pretty much a battlefield, but in uh, 1980 uh, years, I'm, I think at least. Uh, Sorry I haven't posted in a while, I I was waiting for my microphone to fix and it finally did, so so yeah, I will be posting more uh, voice, voice uh, videos, uh, I'm really sorry I haven't uploaded in a while, um, and also this video will, will have a timestamps in the description, so if you want to um, if you are interested interested on what a specific uh, attachment does, just go to in the, into the description, find your, find your attachment, and just watch watch the explanation of this attachment. Uh, you don't need to watch the whole video. I will definitely uh, get these time 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 stamps in the description. Uh, but yeah, enough talking, we'll be beginning with the scope category. And the first, the first three, um, the first three attachments will, will be costing only one budget point, and the first site will, uh, scope will be aim point. Uh, aim point looks a little bit similar to the, to modern, uh, red dot site, which I'm pretty sure it's, um, it, it is based on uh, the base of the aim point is one one big dot on the middle and circle around it. Not really too special. Mm, I want I want also have a deep explanation of this because I don't want this video to be like two two hours long. Uh, I don't even have that much time. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the base of the site can also obscure your vision a little bit, such as on the right, but it isn't all, uh, this big problem, at least for me. Uh, if you have a different opinion on the aim point, aim point, make sure you share it with me and other people. Uh, Alright, we're done with aim point, now to go to the Nyard... Na NIDAR 1X. I'm sorry. Um, the NIDAR 1X. I will just call it NIARD, okay? Uh, the NIARD 1X is very similar to the aim point, which has the base, the the same base uh, of the site as the aim point, which is one one dot on the middle and circle around it. The only difference is that uh, the circle and the dot are yellow. And also the site is a little bit smaller, so uh, it won't obscure vision as much as the aim point, aim point does. Uh, the another one will be Cobra 1X. And the Cobra 1X is my personal favorite site. Um, it is pitch black, so uh, with the light of the sun, you won't be, you won't have any difficulties to to see the site. Uh, the base of the site is uh, three, three lines, three led li red lines, which is one on the left, one on the right, and one on the bottom, uh, which is very simplistic, I'm not gonna lie, but it really represents what you have to do when uh, firing a weapon in full auto, which is pulling your mouse down. And I think it, this site is very clear and see-through, so that's why I really like it. Also, it's placed, placed really high up, so the muzzle attachments were ob won't obscure your vision if you're using this site with uh, another muzzle attachment, for, for example. Alright, the next two sites uh, will be costing two budget points, which are 3x20 and A and PVS. Uh, we will first start off with the 3x20. 
which is um, which has higher magnification than the previous three sites. It has a magnification of uh, three. Of three, uh, magnification is the same as uh, zoom, for example. Uh, I'm not telling the application, but the um, uh, you know what I mean. Um, and the three x twenty in the when aiming down the sides, as you can see, it has four uh, lines that are really thick. So uh, I don't really recommend this site unless you're playing on a lower resolution. If you're play if you're playing on a lower resolution, I kind of recommend it because you will clearly see the lines of the site. But if you're not playing on a low or low resolution. Uh, I don't really recommend this site because uh, these really thick um, lines can uh, can a little bit obscure vision, uh, so that can be a, a little bit a problem. But uh, I don't force you to use anything. I just recommend you. Keep in mind, I'm not a robot, just a, a guy, so I can make uh, make mistakes. Oh, uh, so I think that will be it for the 3x20. Let's move on. Let's move on on to the ANVPS and NPVS, which is placed a little bit higher than the 3x20, and it also have thinner lines. Uh, so. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to pinpoint where exactly is the center of your of your, um, of your uh, crosshair, uh, but if you're but but if you're a epic gamer, you won't be you won't get uh, these problems. Um, so I think that's it. Let's move on. And the next three, three, there's actually three. The next three uh, scopes will cost three budget points, but not only that, they will also uh, force you to use the scout category to equip them. And the first one will be ACOG. The ACOG is very, very powerful, and and I, I really like this site this site. It has a magnification of, I think, uh, four or maybe four and a half. I don't really know, but if you know the exact magnification, please let me know. And the base of this uh, of this site w is one uh, arrow uh, from coming from the, the bottom of the site to the, um, to the center of your site. Um, it is very simple and very see-through, uh, so if you're having trouble a, um, fighting at long ranges, I really rec recommend that you pick up this site, because it's very, very, very good for that. Um, it also gives, uh, in the base of the site, it gives you a... Uh, this, uh, you see this 4 and 6. Uh, this pretty much indicates uh, how high you need to aim while um, while shooting at more distance targets. For example, if I'm shooting uh, for this uh, wood wall, which is around, I don't know, 40 stats away, I will need to pull, out, uh, pull up my crosshair a little bit higher uh, to actually hit them. And for 6... 6... Uh, 16... Uh, 6... 600 stats you will need to uh, to aim a lot higher than the uh, than the previous one so yeah uh, keep in mind that was only an example this is not uh, gameplay i was sh just showing an example uh, all right the next one is the leatherwood site which has the highest magnification uh, that you can put on all weapons, which that magnification is, I think, six or five, or maybe five and a half, I don't know. Mm, this, uh, the base of the site where you, when you're aiming down the site, is the same as the ANVPS. So, 
I recommend uh, this site for the uh, high resolution uh, players. Um, you can also uh, see some troubles when uh, aiming down this, this site. Uh, you can also see some problems with, uh, when um, uh, when when shooting at lo uh, at longer longer range targets because the lines are thin and you can uh, misplace where your uh, center of your crosshair is. <sighs> All right, the so we got uh, everything with the sides that are generic to all um, weapons, but there's specific is some specific uh, sites. For example, for the M1 Garand, you have the 3x Garand, uh, which is this pretty weird looking sight, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it is placed really low on the gun, so um, if you have any barrel attachments, for example, let's use the, um, let's use the um, compensator, for example. If you have a compensator, as you can see, it obscures my vision. Uh, so that's not good. Uh, I don't recommend this sight. I will rather I would rather use a 3x20 uh, or a NVPS so that the muzzle attachment attachment don't obscure my vision, of course. But there's another one for the M1 Grant, which is 7x. Oh boy, the 7x, the highest magnification of all of the scopes. It is very huge. I will give you an example in uh, here. Take a look. You can, with when aiming down the sights, you can clearly see the tire of this uh, vehicle. When not aiming down the sights, I can barely, barely see uh, the tire of this vehicle. So the 7x is very has a very, very huge magnification. So if you're having uh, big, big troubles with when engaging on, at long ranges, or you engage at long ranges a lot of times. I really recommend uh, equipping this site, but be careful. This site costs a whopping four budget points, which is the highest amount of uh, any scope in this category. But uh, there is also one for the M40 which is Redfield, which is... Uh, uh, Redfield is the same as 7X, not really much to talk about. But there is another one, exclusive, um, not here, but uh, for Mosin Nagant, there is PU-1. Uh, PU-1 is very, very strange, at least for me. It has three lines like the Cobra side, one on the left, one on the right, uh, one on the bottom, but they don't, uh, but they don't connect to each other. Uh, instead, the bottom, the bottom uh, line has this, um, has this. I don't know English help. Uh, you you see what I mean? I think. Um. So I think that's all. I pre. I think that's all. Um, yes, that's all. Um, um, the next category, I will go with the Mac category, which is which has uh, two two of the uh, attachments, which which the first one is extended. Um, pretty self-explanatory, but uh, it's pretty more 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 complicated than you think um, in most of the guns uh, this attachment will give 10 more uh, mag 10 more bullets to your magazine uh, which can be really helpful um, I'm not gonna lie um, but in some weapons for example for the AUG the AUG has uh, already 30 rounds so putting an extended max should uh, put the magazine capacity to 13. You're wrong, 
it will put the magazine capacity f to 35. I don't know really this logic of this game, but I guess that's what developers uh, put in the game. So yeah, for for uh, for um, for for example, SKS it gives only five mag magazine capacity more, but for M40 it gives ten. Uh, for the uh, SVD it gives uh, five more, um, and for the all of the other weapons it gives uh, ten or more. Um, magazine side. Oh, uh, the only exception being the G36, with, which uh, gives the same amount as the AUG, uh, which is the 45, uh, uh, 45 magazine capacity. And for pistols, it it is uh, it is that. Uh, for Makarov, it gives uh, five more. No, not five more. It gives eight more. Uh, magazine capacity if I'm not no six more sorry I don't know math uh, for high power this is 11 more for the M1911 it is five more magazine capacity for M9 this is 11 11 and for the Desert Eagle it is not not enough budget points, I'm sorry. And for the Desert Eagle, this is uh, six, six more magazine capacity. Um, yeah, d six more, I think. No, seven more. No. <sighs> I can't do math help. It... It basically makes your magazine capacity go from 7 to 12. <sighs> Alright, uh, the next magazine attachment will be drum. But if you want to access the drum mag magazine, you will need to have the support class equipped. And the uh, drum mag uh, extends your uh, magazine capacity to 50 to hold 50 rounds no matter how much uh, your weapon has capacity in base it will always give you 50 15 50 15 15 15 yes 15 50 uh, rounds in one mag so yeah uh, the drum mag can only be um Put on, put on the assault rifles with one ex exception. I don't know if this is intentional or, or not. Being the SKS, which the SKS with a drum mag is pretty hilarious. I'm not gonna lie. The SKS has really high caliber, which can uh, kill in, I believe, three, three rounds to the body and and. Two shots on the um, head, <coughs> and the drum max just makes it so the magazine capacity is increased to 50 rounds. Um, give me a second; I need to do something. All right, I'm back. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, this case with 50, 15 rounds is pretty hilarious. You can spam this really quickly. I will show you uh, just how much. And you don't need to worry about running dry on ammo because your support, you can give yourself an ammunition. There is no problem. Alright, so we are done with the mag category. Let's now move on to the stock category, for example. And the stock category has only one uh, attachment, which is foldable stock. Now the foldable stock is pretty complicated. 
when folded, which is not not uh, which is hidden, uh, your weapon aims down the sights much faster, as you can see. With, uh, without the uh, with with without the stock and with the stock. It's much faster this way, but it doesn't come at a cost. Um, when f when the stock is folded, uh, your your uh, horizontal and uh, vertical recoil control is a little bit difficult. Is a, a little more difficult to control. As you can see, there's a difference between them, uh, but with the uh, unfolded stock, uh, your horizontal recoil, uh, horizontal and vertical recoil control is increased. So uh, I recommend uh, the stock being f uh, folded when you're engaging at short range. Uh, the horizontal and uh, vertical recoil control add up. Uh, don't really make a lot of difference when um, engaging at short range, but if you're engaging at far range, further ranges, I recommend that you keep the stock stock unfolded, so you have uh, much better, um, so you have better precision, and you also can swap to the single fire for even more precision. I really recommend uh, swapping to the single fire; it really helps. At least for me, I don't know if it just be. And the Air Remington uh, has um, an exception to that. Uh, the Remington, instead of a stock, has a handle, and the handle has uh, you can uh, the handle has a sawed off attachment, which functions the same as the as the unfolded uh, stock when it is being folded, so hidden, but you can't change it manually, it is here forever. Oh, and... Oh, never mind. Uh, back to it. So, the stock category is pretty boring, you only have one attachment, and Keep in mind that the G36 has uh, holding stock automatically equipped, so you don't need to have uh, any anything else mm, modded. Uh, all right, the next one will be, for example, light category. And in light category, you have f you have a, a flashlight, costing one budget points. Uh, the extended mag costs uh, 2 and drum mag costs 3. Foldable stock costs uh, 2 points. Uh, the, flashlights, uh, the flashlight only costs one, cost 1 point, but I know why, because this attachment is pretty pointless. It's only good when you're, uh, when you're playing on the map that has a lot of dark corners, for example, uh, cove or, uh, or when you're being suppressed by the enemy. Uh, in Cove, this is pretty pretty visible when you're go when you go into the um, wood destroyed wood building uh, near the near the middle town. You can really really see that the flashlight is giving you uh, is making your life easier. Um, the flashlight also is pretty useful when you're being suppressed by the enemy. Which, if you don't know what suppression is, it's pretty much uh, when it, when the enemy is shooting at you or or, or almost hitting you, the uh, your skin sc screen will get darker a little bit, so the f flashlight can a little bit negate that. But I still think the flashlight is pretty pointless. Uh, all right, the next one is the laser. Laser is very useful for me, at least. Uh, the laser gives your weapon 
uh, a little bit more accuracy while hip firing. Uh, hip firing means uh, firing when not aiming down the sight. Uh, and the accuracy boost for the laser when t when hip firing is is um, pretty small on t on most guns, but on uh, certain guns like Mosinagant uh, and Mosinagant. It is pretty huge, as you can see. See my crosshair. You can no scope easily with this sight and with this uh, with the laser. And without it, you can't really. It's laser on the most in a gun gives you a lot of accuracy when hip firing. So you can basically with laser you can basically no scope everyone in sight. But the laser costs a lot of points. This is this costs uh, two points instead of one when the flashlight. Uh, all right, we're done with three category, four categories. We, we have now remaining two more. Uh, the next one will be grip category, and the first one in the grip category will be um, vertical grip. Oh, wait, vertical grip, yes. Mm, the vertical grip uh, helps you um, control your vertical recoil control. Um, if you don't know wh what vertical recoil control is, it's pretty much uh, the recoil that goes from bottom to the to up. It basically makes your um, uh, controlling your recoil a lot easier by when I mean a lot easier, I mean a lot easier. Um, I can show you a comparisons, for example. Uh, this is uh, this is with the uh, vertical rip, and this is without it. I can feel the difference, but on video that may be not very visible. But if you you're not believing me, uh, check it in your game. You will definitely see the difference. Um, there is uh, one exclusive attac attachment to the uh, Mac 10 and the AKM, which has their own uh, for for grip for grip uh, which basically functions as the, the same as the vertical grip but it has a different look that is for the AKM and this is for the Mac 10 So yeah, they were they function as the same as the vertical grip. All right, the next one will be uh, bipod grip, which bipod bipod grip I will use a engineer class for example, for this example, and the uh, bipod grip uh, um increases your vet vertical recoil control by a moderate amount. I don't think this is a very crucial... Uh, this doesn't really increase that much of vertical recoil control. Uh, I don't know I don't know why, but I don't feel a, a lot of difference when firing with the bipod grip and without it. No, I don't feel um, much difference in these two. But the bipod grip has a special, unique, um, special, unique ability, which uh, when you go near a surface, I will go here because I think the, the, this example it will be easier here. Um, I will build a large sandbox. 
and the special uh, ability to bipod grip is when you uh, approach a surface and you position yourself correctly which is 90 19 degree uh, uh, near 90 degree of uh, uh, from the from the surface and your you will automatically um, mount the bipod onto the surface um, remember you need to be standing so if you're moving this this won't work but if it works you will see that the weapon is in the straight line with the crosshair and especially and, and essentially what it does it basically makes your gun have zero recoil as you can see there's a big difference between these two uh, so i think a bipod grip should be used when when you have a weapon uh, with a lot of uh, kickback or uh, vertical uh, vertical um vertical uh, vertical uh, vertical recoil <laughs> sorry for repeating vertical so many times um, so yeah that will be it there's also there's also a similar uh, attachment which is a bipod not bipod grip but simple bipod uh, which functions the same as the bipod grip but it doesn't give you a this a vertical vertical grip uh, uh, boost which is uh, not very significant I might I might say wait is it is it more is it does it make the bipods more more efficient than the bipod grip i feeling a little bit different but maybe that's because i changed the gun the gun oh all right i see now uh, so the bipod grip um uh, has this bo uh, um uh, vertical recoil control boost when not ha uh, having the bipod uh, bipod um, deployed uh, um, but it has a lower lower uh, vertical recoil control adapt than the simple bipod at least I think getting some cover up now I don't know, bipods are very com complicated, uh, but I think uh, a simple bipod has a uh, bigger, bigger impact on on uh, the recoil when uh, when it is deployed than the vertical uh, vertical bipod. Uh, I mean bipod grip. Sorry. <laughs> All right. The another, the another one will be a grenade launcher, and the grenade launcher uh, uh, needs you to have the demolition demolition class equipped. Um, grenade launcher costs four points. That's huge, but uh, this doesn't come at a cost uh, at a uh, at a just at just uh, minuses. Um, the uh, grenade launcher gives you the same effect as the vertical uh, vertical grip and for for grip. It gives you the same amount of vertical recoil control as the uh, vertical grip and for grip, but it doesn't end at this stage. It also uh, makes that your uh, that you can change. Uh, that you can uh, fire this grenade launcher uh, but it needs to charge up in order to activate it you need to you need to press one while while having the the AK uh, the weapon equipped uh, keep in mind the uh, the grenade launcher needs to be um, charged 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 
up. If it's not charged, charged, charged up, it won't work. You need to wait for it. Uh, if you don't know how to pinpoint exactly, you need to look at the charge point of your of the N70 and the grenade launcher. And when when this fills up and goes again from the bottom, that means your under 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 barrel grenade launcher also charges up. Um, we need to wait, unfortunately. Oh, uh, the the gr this grenade launcher charged up. That also means that this grenade launcher charged up. Mm, in order to, I, I will uh, say it again. In order to uh, change uh, from your gun to the underbar grenade launcher, you first need to have your gun equipped. Then press one, and you will change to the uh, grenade launcher. Keep in mind the grenades have an arch that will travel to, and it also don't tra uh, travels immediately when you are aiming. For example, I, I aimed right here and it landed here. So, yeah, I think you see the difference. Uh, Alright, we're done with the grip category, we're getting pretty close to the end. Uh, now for the muzzle attachments. The first one will be bayonet. Which the bayonet is pretty pretty interesting. Uh, it changes your it changes in it changes your running animation from this to this. Which can feel like your uh, you're not, uh, which can feel like you're not running, uh, at least for me, I can't really think I'm running, um, well, I think, uh, I feel like I'm running, but, uh, it feels like I'm also, I'm, I'm, I, I'm also not running because, uh, because the, the end of the gun is always uh, placed in... I think you know what I mean. From this, this doesn't this doesn't look very... very intimidating. This, this looks a lot more... I don't know how to describe what I just feel, but I think you know. Um, and bayonet uh, doesn't end at this. Uh, you can uh, you can do a quick bash uh, melee attack by pressing V with any weapon except uh, the knife. I don't know with the grenade launcher. If you do, if no, you can do it with the grenade launcher. But if you press uh, if you press V, you can do this quick bash attack. Which has a lot of cooldown when you're when you're doing it, like for around two seconds. And after these two seconds, I can run again and do anything. But the bayonet uh, and uh, this uh, quick bash attack also deals, um, I believe, 35 damage. Which uh, when you have when you want to kill an enemy an enemy with full HP, you will need to bash attack uh, him uh, three times and then we will you will kill him uh, with the bayonet it the cooldown from the from the attack i think is a little bit no it's the same but the bayonet uh, increases your uh, quick bash attack damage from 45 to 100 which means if you um, punch an enemy an enemy with it you will immediately kill, kill him, no matter how many, how much HP do, does he have or she. Uh, all right, we have a bayonet behind us. Now let's go to the flash hider. Now I don't really know what flash hider does, but I believe it removes tracers from your gun and also. Um, 
when you're firing, it doesn't your muzzle doesn't flash. Um, I don't really know if these two are are exactly what the flash hider does, but I believe they do just that. Mm, but uh, flash hider also reduces your uh, horizontal recoil control by a lot. I mean a lot. The horizontal recoil control is from left to right. As you can see, there's a big difference between them, and that can uh, the flash hider can hurt you more than it's helping you. But I recommend flash hiders for bolt action snipers like Seiko 85 and Mos Nagant. Uh, if you're if you're using uh, the flash hider with them, you don't really feel the difference between having. Uh, less horizontal recoil because it's bolt action, you need to reload after every shot. Mm, you don't really care about horizontal and vertical recoil control. Mm, so, I guess for these guns, the flash hider can be still pretty useful. And another one is uh, the compensator, which is pretty expensive at the cost of free free budget points, but it has a, a very noticeable, a noticeable effect, which which is uh, increasing uh, increasing your uh, horizontal recoil control by a l maybe not a lot but uh, but a significant significant amount. With this attachment. With this attachment and also a, a a vertical grip, with these two attachments, you your gun basically has zero recoil. And maybe a little bit of recoil, but with these attachments, you will be able to very easy uh, spray down your enemies with these attachments. Uh, all right, we're getting very close to the end. The last attachment, uh, which is generic to all of the guns, is uh, the suppressor. Um, and the suppressor is uh, costing uh, four points, and it also uh, forces you to have a specialist class equipped. And the suppressor, as self-explanatory, Silence silences your uh, sound sound of firing by a lot. Maybe not with AK-74 because yeah, but for example with the uh, AUG, I think this will be better. As you can see, the gun the gun sound is silenced. Maybe not a lot. But pretty, 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 pretty huge. And it doesn't end at this point. It also gives your uh, muzzle velocity, which is, um, which is, which is uh, uh, how far your uh, bullet, how how quick your bullet will travel when uh, shoot out. Um, for example, uh, this basically means uh, that uh, your bullet will quick quicker land on the target that you're firing at at long range, which can be pretty useful for snipers or DMRs uh, at long range. Uh, so if you're engaging at long, on long at long ranges a lot and have trouble hitting your target, the suppressor can really can really help you with that. And there are also, uh, I think, two attachments ex exclusive to the SVD and the uh, .32 police, which is a revolver. For the SVD, uh, there is a checklist. 
uh, which I don't know what it does at all. Uh, if you know what it does, I will be l really thankful to you. Um, but at this moment, I don't know what it does. Maybe in the future, when I find out what it does, I will put it in the description or in a pinned comment. If you uh, want to know. Um, Alright, the next one will be for 32 police. Uh, in the handle category, you have a speed loader. And the speed loader... Uh, is basically what you will you want to have at all times. It basically does what it sounds like, which is which is loading in speed. And without this uh, speed loader, you will be um, reloading from bullet to bullet, like in shotguns, it can be interrupted, of course. You, without it, you will be reloading like shotgun. But with the speed loader, you will be loading uh, like a assault rifle. Uh, when you mostly engage at long, at uh, short ranges, I. I recommend more uh, not having the speed loader so you so uh, for example you're shooting here you have like one bullet and the guy pushes you load like two more bullets and you can finish him off with a speed loader you won't we wouldn't be able to do that and there's also another one for the uh, 32 police which is snub and I don't know what it does, same as the checklist for the SVD. Mm, if you know what the snub for the 32 police is, does, I would be really thankful. I thankful if you told if you told me. Um, and if I found out what it does, I will also um, let you know in the description of the video or in a pinned comment. Um, and I think that's all for the attachments in the, oh no, there's actually one more. The short barrel for the Remington 8870. Um, it basically makes uh, your total loadout weight go down by 7%. Not really huge, but I guess... And uh, there, that's yeah, that that's all of the attachments in the unit classified. If you if you watch the whole video, I I really thank you for doing this. Uh, and I don't really know how you're still alive because uh, I'm not. Uh, so I will be ending this video right now. Uh, make sure you like this video so more people can uh, watch it. And see you in the next video. Have a good day.